we're going to do our second type of proof. We're going to do the same problem we just did, but we're going to try and do it by setting up scratch work. And if you prefer to do it this way, then this is the way I recommend um, solving some of these problems. So um, as before, um, we have that the uh, uh, template is going to be exactly the same. We expect the limit to be 2 thirds. And we're going to set up everything with our epsilon being greater than 0. We're preparing the stage by saying we know by the Archimedean property there will be a natural number n. And we're going to determine what that is later. And then we're going to know that uh, after that point, when little n is greater than capital N, we'll have that um, the distance between our point in the sequence and the limit is going to be smaller than epsilon. Oh, wow, look at that. So um, let's go ahead and do it. So our scratch work, our idea is that we want this quantity uh, an minus l to be really, really, really small. And so what we can do, and we've already done this computation in, in another video, but um, we, we do the simplification. We work out what the difference is between the an and the limit. And in the end, after we get rid of the absolute value signs, we see that it's 5 over um, this quantity down here. And so we want this number to be smaller than epsilon. And our intuition you know, says that if n is a really huge number, then we can make this as small as we like. And so how do we do that? Well, we can just solve this because this is a linear equation. We can do that. Um, and uh, we'll just say that if this is smaller than epsilon, well, we can solve for n. So first we move the n to the right-hand side and we put the epsilon on the left. Um, we could subtract 6 from both sides and divide by 9. And this gives us an inequality for n. And if you think about it, these steps can be reversible. So everything we've done in this, we could reverse that. So the fact that 5 over 3 times 3n plus 2 is smaller than epsilon, that's going to happen if and only if n is, is bigger than this quantity. So that'll come into play a little bit later in our proof. So um, with that, we're sort of ready to go. Um, we're going to take this, this thing here, and we're going to put it inside that blank in our proof. Um, and then our proof is basically done. So um, let's read it. So if we have a little n greater than big N, well, this distance between our, our sequence and the limit, well, we already worked out that that's um, this formula here. Um, and we know, ah, this is a good question. So why is this smaller, than, less than or equal um, when we swap the little n for the big N? Well, again, that's because little n is a bigger number. So we've got a bigger denominator here than we do here. And then why is this inequality true? Well, this is really basically saying, remember on that previous slide in our scratch work, um, this is going to be smaller than epsilon if and only if um, n is, is bigger than this thing up here. right? So the best way I like to do it is just keep the scratch work around. And so I can say, if you've got a clear um, description or clear set of steps that show you how we go from uh, solving for epsilon or solving for n, then you could write something like this. Um, for instance, you might write something like scratch work and then have all of the work that, that we saw a few slides ago. So this is another way to do it. Um, you may notice that in doing this we had to be able to solve for n. You can imagine if the formula for n was a little more complicated, if it was like we had to use a quadratic formula or a cubic formula, um, or if there were like trig functions and polynomials, then we probably wouldn't be able to do this. So in practice, we want to use a mixture of the two methods. Um, and uh, so now might be a good time to go and review uh, the limit video one, um, but, uh, or, or, or move on to the next video.